Hey, what's up, YouTubers, and welcome back to the Hannah and Heidi show featuring Toddy Walnuts. And we're going to finish up this little tote, the little tote that could. This will be the last video for this tote. So get yourselves relaxed, get a beverage and a snack, kick your feet up. And let's check out the rest of this tote. Uh, maybe you saw this was sitting at the top of the box. I wanted to start with this one. This one was damaged by a puppy that I had. Um, it was a boxer. I used to have boxers before I had these two beautiful dogs. I had two boxers, a mother, and then uh, we kept one of her puppies. And uh, the puppy chewed this up one day and she chewed up a lady death dvd that i have and uh, i just kept it for i guess uh i mean the discs are still good it's dinotopia and this was a mini series it was a two disc set i think this was either on like hallmark or yeah it was on hallmark and uh, it was a really good series. It's on, it's on Blu-ray now, and I'm going to upgrade this to Blu-ray. I've been looking at this lately, um, but I just kept this kind of like a little crazy memory of a puppy that chewed up a couple of my DVDs, and she was a good dog, though, really good dog. Uh, the next one, I'm just randomly pulling from this last tote. Um, this one was pretty good. It was called Beasts of the Southern Wild. And it was a, um, a young, a black girl. I think it was an African girl. What was her name? I can't pronounce her name, but she was really good. And she was just a, a really young girl when she made this movie. And it's kind of a fantasy adventure type movie, kind of a coming of age. It was really good. I, I the more I'm thinking about it now, I, I really did watch, I really did like this. And I watched it with my oldest daughter at the time. This came out in 2012. So it's 12 years old already. And this is the Blu-ray DVD of it. Um, I think I was at Target and I saw this and I had never heard of it before, but it just, it looked cool. It looked like a good movie. And I, I rolled the dice, I gambled and I won because I, I really enjoyed it. My daughter liked it too. And, um, so I, I would recommend it if you guys haven't seen it before, if you're looking for something new to watch. I thought the, the young girl really did a great job. The next one here is a movie I have a couple of different times. This is the 40th anniversary of Taxi Driver. It's a, it's a really creepy movie. It's not a horror movie, but it, uh, it definitely does give you that vibe, kind of a, a, a mentally unwell individual that is uh, Robert De Niro and uh, I don't think he had to do much acting to become that mentally ill actor uh, actually De Niro is a very very good actor he's just anyway I, I don't really care much I lost a lot of respect for him but this is probably one of his best roles and he's he's been in so, so many great movies this is really good and uh, this was from 1976 can see a very young Harvey Keitel. And very young, a very, very young Jodie Foster. And um, Peter Boyle is in here. He played uh, Frank Barone on Everybody Loves Raymond, a great show. And um, Frank Boyle was a great actor. And there's not really much to say about this movie that you guys don't know. I mean, this is a, it's a classic. And uh, I would put this right up there with like, even though it's not a horror movie, I would put it up there with like uh, Maniac, kind of that, um, that dark inner New York City, kind of grungy, greasy, grimy feel of the city and a, a lunatic who's uh, obsessed with Sybil Shepherd, by the way, let me see if they show her on the back. Sybil Shepherd looked amazing in this movie. She played uh, Betsy. Let's see if we can find her in here. 
she looked really, really good. I own this movie a couple different times, but um, this is remastered in 4K. This is not actually the 4K. They have to have Sybil in here somewhere. There she is. Let's see if we can get that to focus. But she looked really, really good. She was at the top of her game. This was the best that she looked in a movie, I think. The same as uh, Michelle Pfeiffer when she was in Scarface. That was her best look, and they were very comparable. Um, they were both very beautiful. But I do watch this movie from time to time. I, I enjoy it. And uh, I would recommend this movie if you haven't seen it. You can look into the, the mind of a lunatic. I have no idea what this is. I think this was a dollar buy at a Dollar Tree. It's called The Search for Simon, one of the top 10 British comedies of 2013. And I don't even remember buying this, but I will admit I, I do love British humor. And uh, I'm guessing that this is pretty good. It's put out by MVD Visual. It says when David was 10 years old, his younger brother Simon disappeared from his life forever. His father told him that Simon now lives with the space people. A year later, David's father died and his mother refuses to talk about what really happened. David dedicates himself to the world of extraterrestrials looking for the space people and the truth he knows must be out there. David is now a man, and he's still searching for Simon, traveling the world, meeting anyone who has a story about abduction and UFO sightings. That sounds pretty good. I don't know what, why there's a cow on the cover, but uh, I'm willing to give this a shot, see how it is. The next one I picked up here is uh, Jurassic World. And um, I... I was never, I don't know why I bought this. This was probably an impulse buy and I don't even remember buying this. I, I was never really into the Jurassic Park movies. The first one was pretty good and I think they had like three or four sequels maybe, something like that and I just, I never watched any of them and I, I don't even remember picking this up. I do love dinosaurs and stuff like that. I just didn't like the, these movies weren't very good, I, I thought. This one has looks like Chris Pratt right there. Is that Chris Pratt? Yeah, it is Chris Pratt. Now that looks that looks cool right there. That, that big crocodile eating that little shark. I don't know. I I bought it. So the next one here was a $5 dump bin at Walmart. And th this is a classic, but I have, I have never watched it yet. I picked it up for five bucks. It's called The Big Red One. It's a World War II movie, and it was directed by Samuel Fuller. It stars Lee Marvin, has uh, Mark Hamill and uh, Robert Carradine in, in the movie. And I, I really enjoy World War II movies and documentaries. Uh, I'm very fascinated by World War II, and even though I didn't watch this, I do plan to. It looks like there's some bonus features, not much. There's a commentary, it looks like. Um, but four or five bucks a couple of years ago, it was probably like more like five or six years ago, I picked it up. The big red one. Here is the DVD box set of Ghostbusters 1 and 2. And I saw Ghostbusters 1 in the movie theater with my parents and my brother when I was just a wee lad. And I, I really loved it. And uh, those three guys together, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, and Dan Aykroyd were great together. Add in uh, Rick Moranis and uh, Sigourney Weaver. It's a great, great cast. And this one comes in a pretty nice little box, kind of a foil box. And it comes with some slim pack movies and a book. Let me see when this box set was released. I've had this for many, many years. Uh, it looks like 2005, the DVD box set came out. 
So here's the booklet. We'll flip through that in a second. But here are the two movies. I enjoyed the remake with the ladies. I thought that was really good. I thought they got undeserved hate for that movie. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I haven't seen the latest one that, uh, like, it just came out, I think. Or it came out recently. But these are the uh, first two. And then here's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. And it's kind of like storyboards and concept art. Nice little box set. Peter Venkman, Egon, here's Winston. He was a great addition to the team as well. I liked his character. Slimer. There's that terror dog, Hound from Hell. That was a great character. There's the lovely Sigourney Weaver. She had legs for days and days and days. She's got to be, I'm guessing she's got to be in her mid-70s by now, I would think. All of these guys are. Hey, Harold Ramis passed away some years ago, but uh, I, I believe Bill Murray and Aykroyd have to be in their 70s by now. So that is Ghostbusters 1 and 2. I'll never get rid of that, even though I do have these on Blu-ray now. This next movie is excellent. You guys may remember Mitch Album. He used to be a ESPN anchor back in the 90s, maybe into the early 2000s. But he actually wrote a book and a script for this movie called Five People You Meet in Heaven. And it has some pretty good actors here. You can see John Voight, Ellen Burstyn, Jeff Daniels, um, Michael Imperioli, who played Christopher Maltesanti in The Sopranos. And uh, this this movie is excellent. It's, it's a good family movie, but it's very touching. All of the people that he meets, well, I'm not going to give it away. It, it's definitely something you'd want to watch. And if I tell you what the people are, it kind of ruins it a little bit. Although it it explains it early in the movie, but I'll let you watch it and you can find out on your own. But this is a, a very, very good movie. It's it's very underrated. You never hear anybody talk about this. It's kind of chilling and kind of um, it kind of tugs at your heartstrings a little bit. It's kind of emotional. It's a, it's a really good movie. Five people you meet in heaven. And take a look here. You can see Michael Imperioli, who was uh, one of my favorite characters on the Sopranos as uh, Christopher Maltesanti. He was uh, Tony Soprano's nephew. The next one here was one of the most fun movies I've watched in probably the last five years. This is a, a definitely a grindhouse type movie. It's called Brawl in Cell Block 99 and it stars Vince Vaughn as man he's, he's just a, a complete badass in this movie and he just he just goes crazy. There's some really, really good fight scenes. And Vince Vaughn in real life, I think he's about like 6'5 or 6'6. And he's just, he's pretty well put together. And um, uh, I would definitely recommend this if you haven't watched it. I think this is the 4K. It looked really good. This was really, it, it surprised me. I didn't know what to expect when I popped this in and watched it. I was really surprised. I, I really enjoyed this. If you like action grindhouse feel movie um you like uh, fight scenes and brutal fights so you get uh let's see what you get here it's it's the 4k right there and then this is the regular blu-ray but i i would definitely give this two thumbs up and uh i would definitely recommend this to people definitely do check it out here's one that i had watched on HBO several times. I taped it onto a blank tape from HBO and I wore it out. And uh, this is the uh, DVD snapper case. I hate these snapper cases, but 
this movie is amazing. I, I love this movie. It's really good. Really good characters and really good action. Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket from 84, 87. 116 minutes, almost two hours. Yeah, this, this drill sergeant here, R. Lee Ermey, steals the show. And from what I hear, he was a real uh, drill sergeant in the Marine Corps. And a lot of his dialogue as the drill sergeant in this movie was ad-libbed. So he created his own dialogue. And not all of it, though, but um, that scene alone, you can YouTube it and just put in... Um, Full Metal Jacket Drill Sergeant or whatever, and you'll see it's now you have to keep in mind that there are going to be some, I have to be careful what I say. There's very colorful language, but there's also um, racial slurs in this movie, and they were trying to make it kind of be realistic for the time. Of course, nowadays they wouldn't say half the things that they said in this movie, but this was back in in the Vietnam days, you know, in the in the late 60s. So back then it was a whole different world that we lived in. And so you're going to hear some some very colorful slurs in here. If you're offended by that, then stay away from this movie. But if you can get past that, if you're an adult and you can actually understand that it's just a movie, I think you would enjoy this. And I would definitely recommend this. This is one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Full Metal Jacket. The next one is another movie that was an adaptation from a book series. This is called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, this was pretty fun. It was a good little kind of a sci-fi family movie. And um, it's, it's very family friendly. It's kind of, a, kind of a kid's movie, but adults enjoy this too. I enjoyed it. And uh, not really much else to say. It's... It's fun. I would recommend it if you have young kids and you want to watch a movie together with them and introduce them to this. You could probably get this on Blu-ray or 4K by now, but this was the, the DVD that I bought back in... Uh, when did this come out? I'm not, I'm not seeing a year. 2005 release. 2005 DVD release. Almost 20 years already. Here's another one of my favorite movies of all time. This is Tarantino's best movie, in my opinion, uh, Pulp Fiction. Um, such a great story. I love the way that the, the stories blend together. And some of the scenes are like in the future. And some of the scenes later in the movie are like, it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to describe this movie. You almost have to watch it at least twice to kind of put it together. And I mean, the characters are, the, the soundtrack in this is phenomenal and the characters are just amazing. It's just a great movie. Everybody has seen Pulp Fiction by now, but if you haven't, you got to check it out. Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson working together. They, they steal the show. There's Butch, played by Bruce Willis. There's Mia Wallace, um, played by Uma Thurman. You got Tim Roth, Honey Bunny, and uh, I forgot what the this British couple. They they were great. They ended up they end up robbing the diner, and there's um, Marcellus Wallace. He's kind of like the head gangster. So many great characters in here. Let's see if we can find Travolta. There's Travolta on the disc. Vincent Vega, and. Um, Samuel L. Jackson really had played a great role in this movie. Sam Jackson played in a lot of Tarantino's movies. When did this come out? I used to have this on VHS. It's 154 minutes running time. That's a long movie, but it's, it's worth it. If you can sit through it, it's really worth it written and directed by I believe this was his first movie was this his first movie or Reservoir Dogs I don't remember it might have been Reservoir Dogs and then this second I, I can't remember but this is a really good addition too 
I have this on Blu-ray a couple different times, but I'll always keep this DVD. Speaking of two guys playing great roles together, like uh, John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson, we have Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor in a three-pack. You get Stir Crazy, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, and Another You. And these these guys crack me up, man. These, these movies are so good. If I'm feeling kind of depressed or just, you know, feeling kind of blah, I put movies in like this and it perks me right back up. You get uh, three movies on these uh, skinny packs here. Um, for me, I think it's hard to choose between Stir Crazy and See No Evil, Hear No Evil. They're, they're both great. And then another you is a little bit um, not as not as good as the first two, but I think I would go see no evil, hear no evil, one. And I I know most people would pick stir crazy one, but I'm gonna go one, two, three in this pack. So check those out. That's a nice little three pack to get. So I I love the castaway type movies, and then within the next few titles here, you're gonna see why or you're going to see more titles like this, but uh, this one's called The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe, and this was an excellent movie based on the world-famous classic by Daniel Defoe, and uh, these are really, really good movies. This was uh, rated PG-13, and this one, I'm trying to see the year that this one came out. It's uh, 193 minutes, so it's over three hours long, so you're definitely going to have to dedicate some time to watch this, but it's so good and it's it's really worth it to me. That is, uh, oops, didn't snap it right. So that is uh, The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. The next one here is The Old Man and the Sea. It's not quite a... Uh, like a stowaway or castaway type movie um, where somebody's stranded on an island or anything. But um, Anthony Quinn played a hell of a role. This is called the Tribute Ed Edition. I think this was a an import. It looks like it may have been an Asian import. I'm not sure, but uh, I really enjoyed this movie. Anthony Quinn was an unbelievable actor based on the novel by Ernest Hemingway. And I, I would definitely recommend this one too. Let me see, when did this one come out? Um, it doesn't, uh, 2003, is that right? Possibly, that's possibly right. And here's an even older rendition of The Old Man in the Sea, starring Milwaukee, Wisconsin's very own Spencer Tracy. Uh, this one was really good, too. These, it's hard to pick which one was better. I, I just, I'll watch any rendition of this movie. It's re really good. And it's got the old snapper case. I've had this for many, many years. This one's only 86 minutes running time. But it has a behind-the-scenes documentary about Hemingway and the legend of the sea. And any way you can get this movie, check it out. But I definitely recommend both of these, actually. And then pick up the Robinson Crusoe, too. Pick up all three of these. You could probably get these for a couple bucks a piece. It's definitely worth it. So here's Travolta and Sam Jackson again together in a movie called Basic. And this movie blew me away. It has a a big twist ending. I'm not going to give anything away. Um, this movie is amazing. And I stumbled across it on accident one time. I was watching, um, I was flipping through pay-per-view years ago, and I couldn't find anything I wanted to watch. And I was like, you know what, I'll check out a Travolta Sam Jackson movie. And I, I bought it. I think it was like four ninety five dollars or something for a one-night rental on pay-per-view. And man, I was, I couldn't believe how good it was. And uh, I, I would definitely recommend this one too. It's about it's about violence that happens in a military training exercise. I don't want to give anything away, but there's there's some 
some shady stuff that's going on and there are a couple casualties and so they call in people to investigate and during the investigation things start to kind of fall into place and things that you wouldn't expect start falling in place and then there's a really big twist at the end and this one came out in 2003 has a really good cast it has Tay Diggs uh, Gio Giovanni Rabisi John Travolta obviously Connie Nielsen's in here she plays the she's kind of the um she's the one that gets fooled I'll put it that way I don't want to give anything away Harry Connick Jr. is in here as well excellent movie I would definitely recommend this I'll give it a nine out of ten that's how good it was to me anyway The next box set here is the Planet of the Apes trilogy. You get Rise, Dawn, and War. And I have the, <laughs> I have these movies a couple times already. Uh, I wanted to get it in individually with slip covers. I wanted to get the box set. Um, I'm a big fan of the Apes movies. And this is a nice little trilogy on Blu-ray. I think it was only like 30 bucks, which you could probably get it even way cheaper than that now. I bought this when it first came out. It comes with a poster too. I think I paid like 30 bucks for it, which I thought was a great deal for all three movies in one box set. You might be able to get this for 15 now, or maybe even less if you buy it gently used on eBay or something. But you got to get the Apes movies. Next one's another sci-fi movie, Giant Giant uh, Mechanical Monsters, Pacific Rim, comes with this nice slipcover, calling it the Monster Mayhem line that came out, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. There you can see, oops, you can see Ron Perlman, who was a Hellboy. You can see Idris Elba, I think that was one of his early, early roles. Um, and I enjoy this movie. I like the, uh, the big mechanical monster movies. And you get the Blu-ray and the, oh, there's actually two Blu-rays. Okay, you get a Blu-ray movie and then you get the Blu-ray special features. Nice little creature feature mechanical style Pacific Rim. This came out in, it's 131 minutes. It, it's PG-13 and it came out in 2013. The next one here is a really low budget sci-fi movie, kind of a Star Wars ripoff called Hunter Prey. And um, for a very, very low budget, they I think they did a great job with this movie and I was pretty impressed with it. And this came out in 2010. Uh, 88 minutes running time. You get a director's commentary here. I, I'm sure by now this has a Blu-ray, maybe even a 4K. I don't know, but this was kind of a, kind of an underground movie, um, independent movie, and I, I don't think it really got the love I think that it deserves for, for a low-budget movie that uh, the little engine that could type movie. Um, I would recommend this if you guys like your um, sci-fi, and if you like uh, Star Wars type movies. It's you're not going to get a Star Wars movie out of this, but you'll I think you'll appreciate their effort in trying to kind of recreate it. The next one is called There Will Be Blood. And I remember when I bought this movie, I bought No Country for Old Men the same the same night. I bought them both together and I think it was at a Best Buy. And then I brought them home and I watched them back to back. I did like a double feature and it was one of the best double features I ever watched. Um, no Country for Old Men is, is better, but this was really good too. And uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. Um, yeah, they're calling it a widely acclaimed masterpiece. I would say so. It's American Epic Academy Award-winning performance by Daniel Day-Lewis. 
I think he was also in The Last of the Mohicans, wasn't he? And that was a great movie too. Which I would recommend. I don't think I have it in this video, but I do have it. And uh, the, Last of the, the Last of the Mohicans was an excellent movie. But this was really good too. What, is, what comes inside of it? You just get the, the movie there. It looks like there's a reversible cover. But if you haven't seen this movie, check it out. If you want to have a double feature like I did, then get uh, No Country for Old Men and watch these back to back. I just wanted to interject here and say that if you're still watching, I appreciate that. I know most of the people who watch my videos are either into just strictly horror movies or just strictly Disney movies, because that's what I show the most of. Uh, I can see how these last three tote videos might not reach the people, but if you're still watching, I, I appreciate you. So give yourselves a pat, pat on the back and uh, know that I appreciate you. So the next one here is the extended cut of Ghost Rider starring Nicolas Cage. These are fun movies. I, I always like Nick Cage. I think he's a good actor. I know he's a little bit eccentric and he's a little bit weird sometimes, but I really like his movies and I think he's a great actor. And uh, what the hell? Hold on a second here. Let me pause it. I don't know why there's a loose disc. This is the extended cut. And this is the extended cut Blu-ray. Why do I have two movies in here? There's only a spot for one. Unless they were both together on the same hub in the middle. Let's see. One must be a DVD and one must be a blue. Well, the other one is a Blu-ray. I don't know if this is a DVD though. It must be. But these are fun movies from the comic books. And uh, oh, Eva Mendez, she's, I wonder whatever happened to her. I don't even know if she's been in movies lately. But she was something else when she first came out. This was from like 2007. So this was about 17, almost 18 years ago. But yeah, she was uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice indeed. The next one is an all-star cast uh, about a bunch of guys trying to sell property. And this is called Glen Gary, Glen Ross. It's a great movie. Uh, you got Pacino, you got Jack Lemmon, you got Alec Baldwin, Eddie, Eddie Harris, you got Alan Arkin, and Kevin Spacey. Um, unfortunately, Lemon and Arkin are no longer with us, but we still have uh, Pacino and the rest of the guys. Although Kevin Spacey, you can hear the ambulance go by. I live one mile east of the hospital, and I hear that all the time. I hear ambulance go past my back and forth past my house all the time, especially after bar closes at like 2, 2.30 in the morning. I hear it all the time. Um, but I think Ke Kevin Spacey must be canceled by now, I think, from, for the things that he got into, the, the sick bastard that he is. But this movie's pretty good. It's, um, it's, it's kind of a different type of a topic, and but there's some really good one-liners. The acting is excellent in this movie. Coffee's for closers. If you guys saw this movie, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, do check it out. I mean, it's it's not a must see, but if you're if you're bored someday, check it out. It's pretty good. This was a sequel of Ghost Rider: Spirit of Vengeance. It's an awesome cover. This movie came out in 2012. It brings back Nick Cage world's darkest hero rides again the Idris Elba again you'll have to excuse my hands I was doing some yard work again last weekend and I I, I really get into it man I I go all out man <laughs> yeah but I get blisters and cuts and all that stuff but there it is uh spirit of vengeance this movie is hilarious. I remember watching this with my dad when I was a kid. It's called Johnny Dangerously, starring Michael Keaton. It's hilarious. It's a, a really, really funny movie. 
it's a it's it's a comedy based on gangsters from like the 50s and you got Joe Piscopo you got um, Michael Keaton you got Mary Lou Henner if you remember her from Taxi um, who else is in here Maureen Stapleton who was uh, Edith Bunker on uh, All in the Family you got Peter Boyle in here again who was uh, he was in a lot of stuff but I, I liked him the most as um, uh, the father on Everybody Loves Raymond. He was um, uh, Frank Barone, and you guys may remember Griffin Dunn too. He was he was kind of a a big actor back in the '80s. You don't really hear too much about him anymore. Danny DeVito, Dom DeLuise. I mean, this is an all-star cast, and uh, it, this is just a hilarious movie. There's a lot of adult humor, so there's a lot of um, kind of innuendos and uh, adult language, so kind of keep that in mind. And, but it is rated PG-13, which I was surprised to see that, because there's some some pretty, uh, like I said, innuendos. I mean, well, when you hear the Italian guy talk about cork suckers and stuff like that, it's pretty funny. If you've seen the, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about, but... Uh, Anyway, great movie. Check it out. I got First Blood, the Ultimate Edition, starring, obviously, Sly Stallone. I had this movie for a long time. The movie itself came out in 1982. Um, this was, I think this was one of the first DVDs I ever bought. And I've had this in my collection ever since. But there's really not much to say that you guys don't know about already. Um, is it wide? Oops. Man, is it? It's widescreen. They don't really even like label the DVDs like this anymore. That's how old this is. But uh, great movie. Um, brings me back to the 80s, the VHS days. Next one is called 10,000 BC. I watched this once. I don't really remember much about it. I, I remember watching it and I was really tired. I was working third shift at that time years ago. And I remember I was kind of nodding off and waking up, catching it a little bit of it and then nodding off again. I really should rewatch this, but I think I'm gonna look for like a Blu-ray of this. Because what I did watch and I remember was, uh, was very good. It was very nice. Uh, Nice, uh, like, graphics, because there's a lot of CGI in here, and, uh, like, a lot of the uh, scenery was really nice. You can see kind of, like, the swampy jungle and the saber-toothed tiger. I'm going to have to try to track down a, a Blu-ray of this. I know, I know, we're almost there. We still have... <laughs> oh, I, I want to make this the last video, though. So, this movie right here cracks me up, and when I was a... Well, I probably shouldn't say this, but when I was a prison guard for four years, I used to work the night shift. And my partner, my my, uh, we worked in a segregation unit in the cell block. And she would bring in a portable DVD player into our bubble. That's what they called our little, like our little office area was the bubble. And we would sit and watch movies in there because at this time the inmates were sleeping. And we would have to get up every, one of us would have to get up one hour to go do head count and then come back and we, you know, we'd pause it and then come back and watch the movie. We watched this movie a lot of times in the, in the bubble. And um, I have really good memories of this. Uh, Martin Lawrence, Black Knight. This is hilarious. Martin Lawrence is really, really funny as it is. And I like the, the kind of the medieval day stuff. Um, and the, the comedy and the adventure in this movie blended together is really good. Martin was at his A game in this movie. It's very hilarious. Do check it out. The next one is uh, the Steve McQueen collection. Steve McQueen was also nicknamed the King of Cool, just like Dean Martin was. They shared that nickname somehow. Um, this is the Blu-ray collection box set. So in this box set, you get uh, the Great Escape. Hold on, sorry about that. The The Magnificent Seven, the Thomas Crown Affair, and the Sand Pebbles. And this is a nice little, nice little box set. 
And uh, Steve McQueen was really cool. He was a great actor. And I'm glad to have this. Getting into a little a little pack of goodies here. This one was excellent, starring Liam Neeson, the gray, about a, uh, a plane that goes down in a wintry setting and the survivors have to try to band together to survive. And uh, they are hunted by a pack of giant gray wolves. And although, well, I'm not gonna say I was going to say a little something about the ending, but if I do, it would kind of ruin it. So if you haven't seen the movie, definitely check this out. Liam Neeson is a badass. And this movie was excellent. I, I just, I love movies like this with the, the snowy setting. It was almost a horror movie with the wolves. The wolves are very vicious and they're huge. And um, they're getting weak. The humans are getting weaker and they're colder and they're hungry. And they're just trying to survive and they're being... Um, they're just being hunted down by these these wolves and uh, I love this movie this is a blu-ray DVD combo the movie came out in 2012 definitely worthy of a just buy it if you haven't seen it just blind buy it and add it to your collection you will love this movie here's another one that was excellent and when I first watched this I didn't know what to expect I went into this blind and I ended up loving it. Uh, this is a, a fantastic movie. It was based on a true story called The Way Back. And it's about a group of prisoners who escape and they have to go across the, um, the Russian, what did they call it? Hold on a second. The Russian outback, but it, there was a, a term that they used for it, and I, it's escaping me. It says, it's inspired by an incredible true story. The way back begins in 1940, when seven prisoners attempt the impossible escape from the brutal Siberian gulag. Thus begins a treacherous 4,500-mile trek to freedom across the world's most merciless landscapes. They have little food and few supplies. They don't know or trust each other, but together they must withstand nature at its most extreme. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Colin Farrell, or Colin, uh, what's his name? Is it Colin Farrell? It is Colin Farrell. Um, he played one hell of a role. I'm not the biggest Colin Farrell fan, but he was outstanding in this movie. Um, Ed Harris is in this one again. And this was probably one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Everything about it was great. And uh, I definitely do recommend checking this out the way back. The next one is a Dungeons and Dragons double feature. You get the original Dungeons and Dragons, and then you get the sequel, I guess, uh, Wrath of the Dragon God. These movies are pretty good. Um, there's a lot of CGI in the second one, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, the first one was a little bit silly with one of the the, the Wayans brother, what was his name? Marlin, or, not Marlin, the other one. But uh, yeah, it is Marlin, Marlin Wayans. Um, the, the second one was a little bit better in my opinion, but this was still fun. If you can get past the, the whole Marlin Wayans, kind of a clown ass in the movie. But uh, I think they tried to use him as like a, uh, as like the little comedy of the clown, you know, I don't know. It, it didn't really work for me, but um, part two was a little bit better. Another one of my favorite childhood movies of all time is The NeverEnding Story. This is the double feature. You also get The NeverEnding Story Part Two, the next chapter. Part one was almost flawless. Part two was not nearly as good. They still brought back the Luck Dragon but in the Rock Biter and stuff like that, but a lot of the other characters were not in the second one. Um, and for some reason, I have it again in a different, it's a different double feature. Um, I don't know why or how I did that, but the first one had uh, Noah Hathaway as a, a Treyu and uh, Barrett Oliver was, uh, was the, the little boy reading the book. And in part two, they had Jonathan Brandis who was kind of like the lead character. 
and uh, he had kind of a troubled childhood and he, he ended it very young. It's a shame. I think he was in the 27 club, one of the guys who, or one of the uh, people who died tragically at 27, like uh, Cobain and Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin. And I think um, Jim Morrison was 27 club. Um, there was a, there's a whole list. And I think Brandis was 27 too. But uh, these are, these are great movies. They're fun family movies. The next one was one that my daughter picked out, my oldest daughter, years ago. Uh, we're, in my family, we're all big dog lovers, and I used to have boxers. I had three different boxers in my life, and that was before I bought these beauties here, but I think I'm going to buy another boxer at some point down the road. Um, but this one's called Good Boy, and it's just, it's a boy. It's a, about a boy and his dogs, and he's a dog walker, if I remember, and they get into shenanigans and it's a pretty good cast you got some of these saturday night live you got kevin nealon and molly shannon and there's a lot of beautiful dogs in this movie i, I can't say that i would recommend this uh maybe to children this is a it's a really good um it's a good family movie you can sit down with your mom and your mom and dad if you're a little kid and watch this with them and not you know not worry about cussing or anything like that but as an adult i don't know it's do what you got to do, I guess. The next one is the Porky's box set. This is the triple feature. You get Porky's, Porky's 2 the next day, and Porky's Revenge. I think it's on three discs. And uh, so you get Porky's from 81, Porky's 2 from 83, and Porky's Revenge from 85. These were pretty, pretty funny movies. I, I wasn't really allowed to watch these when I was a little kid. My mom and dad were watching stuff like this, you know, and... I would hear them in the other room laughing, but they wouldn't let me. But when I got older, I did. So you better believe it. <laughs> but and these movies were never really that great. But they, they were they were funny. And there was a lot of a lot of nudity and and a lot of humor. So what more can you want? Okay. So the next box set is another one that I've had for many years. This is the Shogun Collection, starring Sonny Chiba. And in this set, you get Shogun Samurai, Shogun Shadow, Swords of Vengeance, and Shogun's Ninja. And they come in these slim packs. And uh, these are excellent movies. They're all in Japanese language with English subtitles. And the movies came out in uh, 1978 for Shogun Samurai, also 1978 for Swords of Vengeance. And then uh, 1981 for Shogun's Ninja, and 1989 for Shogun's Shadow. And I thought that Sonny, well, Sonny Chiba was in all of these movies. He starred in all these movies, but I thought that he directed one as well. And I'm, I'm not seeing that on the back, so I'll have to do more research. But I'm not going to take up more of your time looking for that. Um, I know that he did a lot of the... The sword play battles and he did a lot of the choreographing for that Sonny Chiba did um, but I thought that he actually did some of the directing too this was from a company called Ronin Entertainment and I've had this for a long time and this was a really well put together box set uh, it's got a really sturdy outer shell and they were doing this way before like Arrow was even a company so this is a really nice set. I will never get rid of this. It's uh, I've taken good care of it over the years. But so I, I would recommend this if you love Japanese like samurai stuff. Um, definitely check it out. Here's possibly the greatest coming of age story movie um, that I've ever seen. Anyway, this is called Stand by Me. Everybody has seen this by now. Great cast, deluxe edition. You got. Will Wheaton, you got River Phoenix, you got Corey Feldman, and you got Jerry O'Connell, and then you got the one of their, I can't remember, was I think it was uh, Corey Feldman's older brother in the movie, Kiefer Sutherland. No, it was, it was uh, River Phoenix. I've seen this movie many times. I don't know why I can't remember that. But you also have John Cusack. You can see uh, Kiefer. What a great movie this was. They take a 
a trip to find a dead body and they kind of find themselves and they become better friends and uh, the ending is a little bit sad but and then of course the ending of River Phoenix we know how he turned out I think he might have been another 27 but uh, the excellent movie I'm sure most of you have seen this before this is a really nice set too this is the DVD box set and you get the the movie I think it's a two disc set you get the DVD and then there's a soundtrack CD soundtrack and the song titles Let's see if we can zoom in on that you get every day let the good times roll come go with me yakety yak lollipop great balls of fire mr. Lee and stand by me what a great soundtrack and then you get a pretty nice book too really nice it shows some poster art and a little some bios about the actors and what a beautiful set this is why I'll never get rid of my DVDs because sets like this they don't really make them like that anymore and we got a couple left uh, this is another sword and sandal movie another excellent movie great cast you got Brad Pitt Eric Bana Orlando Bloom you got Troy this is the two disc widescreen edition and what a great movie this was. It's an epic battle uh, movie. Brad Pitt picks up a sword and brings a muscular brooding presence to the role of Greek warrior Achilles. And you, you find out about the Achilles heel in this movie. But disc one is the movie, disc two is the bonus materials. And you can see if you want to read that what the bonus materials are. Wolfgang Peterson directed this. What a great, this is a gem. 2004, this came out. You got the insert, you got the two discs. I'm trying to hurry up a little bit here at the end. I'm sorry about that. Usually I don't like to hurry, but um, I got other things I gotta do. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have made this one so long. Uh, I think uh, it was either in part one or part two, I showed you guys a movie called Flowers for Algernon. And had Matthew Modine in it. Um, this movie is an adaptation from the same novel, Flowers for Algernon, called Charlie. And again, it's about, this one has Cliff Robertson in it, and it's about a, a mentally disabled man who has a very, very low IQ. And he goes through an experimental brain surgery and it's very successful to the point where it makes him have a genius IQ. And I, I don't want to tell you the ending, but it's, it's a very touching ending. He has a, a decision to make. And I, I strongly recommend that you watch either Flowers for Algernon or Charlie or read the book Flowers for Algernon and, and then watch the movies. These are really good. The next one, I think uh, Jennifer Lawrence was at her peak in this movie. I think she's really pretty. This one's called Winter's Bone. And in the movie, Jennifer Jennifer Lawrence's father, played by John Hawks, who was also in the uh, HBO miniseries um, Deadwood. Um, he's a deadbeat, and he's in and out of jail. And uh, he goes missing. He takes off on his family. And in this movie, she has to try to track her father down. Otherwise, her and her siblings are going to be out of a house, out of, you know, nowhere to live, no, nothing to eat. And uh, there he is right there. If you guys remember John Hawks from um, Deadwood, which I another series I strongly recommend. It's, it's great. Um, this is a pretty good uh, suspense. It's like a suspense thriller from 2010. 100 minutes running time. This was good. I remember this. I watched it one time. This is a, a Viking battle movie called Pathfinder, unrated. It was very gory. There was a lot of blood. There's some very intense battle scenes, and you can see some badass Vikings just fighting to the death. Packed with extreme battle footage not shown in theaters, plus an army of kick-ass special features, savage Viking invaders bent on death and destruction. 
clashed with the iron-willed protectors of the New World in a heroic action adventure filled with intense battle scenes and breathless primal violence. I have to check this one out again. This was a fun watch. This one came out in uh, 2007. Two more, and they're both winners, in my opinion. This is Willow. This is another adventure movie. Um, one of my favorite movies. This is a great uh, double feature with The Princess Bride. Watch Willow and The Princess Bride back-to-back. -back. They're excellent movies. Uh, you have Mad Mardigan, played by uh, Val Kilmer. And uh, just just a fun family movie. But, you, I mean, even just for anybody, not just the family. This is a really great movie. They have to protect the baby. And uh, the evil witch is out to get the baby because the baby is a, a the bloodline to be the new ruler. And she, the witch doesn't want the baby to survive, to be that ruler. They want to eliminate the baby. And, um, and Willow has to protect the baby at all costs. And he goes on an adventure to, to save the baby. During his adventure, he un, well, he meets Mad Mardigan. I don't want to tell you how. In case you haven't seen it, I don't want to ruin that. And they band together to... And he joins forces to help protect the baby. Very good story. Definitely recommend this. And I have this on, on Blu-ray too. But I'll never get rid of the DVD. And finally, probably one of the best comedies ever. Great cast of characters here. You have the Cannonball Run. So many great actors in this movie. Um, you have Burt Reynolds, Farrah Fawcett, Roger Moore, Dom DeLuise, and then there's so many more. Um, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis made a, a cameo in the movie. More than a cameo, they were actually in the movie for a while. There was a young Jackie Chan in the movie. Um, Adrian Barbeau was in the movie. Jamie Farr from MASH. Terry Bradshaw, the quarterback, the Fox football analyst. Stuttering Mel Tillis was in the movie. He was a great character. Mean, or not Mean Joe Green. What was the uh, the Pittsburgh Steeler football player? Uh, Joe Joe Klecko, was it? It doesn't say it back, but I believe it was Joe Klecko and, uh, and Mel Tillis were teamed up together. So the Cannonball Run, what it was, is they had to go across the country in a race, and whoever got to the finish line first got a, a prize. What was it? I don't remember what the prize was, $10,000 or something like that. So um, the Cannonball uh, Sea to Shining Sea Memorial Trophy Dash and Anything Goes All Stops Out and Thoroughly Illegal Competition that has grown to legendary proportions in the last 10 years. But it's, it's great. And uh, Farrah Fawcett looked amazing in this movie. She was absolutely amazing. Oh, and they had, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy with the uh, the doctor that they picked up, uh, Jack Elam. Jack Elam was the crazy doctor that um, Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise, they were driving an, an ambulance as they were pretending like they were doctors or uh, paramedics because they figured they wouldn't get pulled over by cops if they had their sirens running and they were going to try to get away with that. So they had to pick up a doctor along the way they picked up Jack Elam and he was he was crazy and he kept giving himself injections and it, it's pretty hilarious. So that will do it for this little tote and I rambled and I gave you guys some great suggestions. Hope you take some of them. The Way Back is excellent. Willow is excellent. The Black Knight, excellent. The Grey, Stand By Me, these are all really good movies. Uh, I hope I gave you guys some suggestions. Hope you enjoyed the movie, uh, the, the video, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Thank you for watching.